We praise God. We thank God for being here tonight. We're still excited. I went home last night. I couldn't hardly go to sleep. I'm still excited. Oh, I'll come down after a while. Thank God for all these pastors, associated pastors, ministers, praise God, and each one that are present. We just thank God for being here tonight. Amen. As we said on yesterday, pray God, we ask God present to abide in this place. Amen. What people, if you don't have, if you're friendless, you can find a friend. You can find love, whatever you want. Praise God in Christ. We won't believe in God. You're going to find it here at the temple. Amen? Amen. So you that have the need tonight, we want you to get ready. Amen? Amen. This is a place of deliverance. Help me to believe that. Place of encouragement. Place where you can be saved, delivered, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. We, now we're down to the Word of God. And I'll tell you one thing, praise God. Full gospel is not suffering for preachers. Amen. Amen. You can just pick out any one. Amen. Pray God. And this is a week of dedication. Amen. We started off yesterday. We believe it's going to get a little better and a little better every night. Amen. Well, the preacher to break the bread of life is here tonight. One for tomorrow night is here. One Wednesday night is on his way. I understand he's bringing about 40 some odd people from Detroit, Michigan. The preacher, praise God, for Thursday night is here. And also the preacher for Friday night is already here. So we're expecting church. Oh, we're going to have some church up in here. Is that right? Well, glory. So we got a preacher that can preach tonight don't mind preaching and is anointed to preach the gospel. Let's receive it by the words of amen. None other than Bishop Paul Cannon, all the way from Texarkana. Come on, give him a big hand. Oh, put those hands together for the Lord, everybody. Come on, give Jesus the glory tonight. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I feel good tonight. I say, I feel good tonight. Not because I got a million dollars. Not because I got a Rolls Royce. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul can't help but to shout, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. You ought to shake somebody's hand and tell them, neighbor, I feel good tonight just because I'm saved. Yes, sir, just because I'm saved. Oh, bless his name. Thank you, Lord. You ought to clap your hand one more time before you take your seat. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. When I think about where I could be and think about where I should be and look at where I am, I give God the glory tonight. Could be dead. Should have been in jail once or twice. <laughs> but I'm in the Lord's house giving God the glory. And I'm glad about it tonight. Bless his name. God bless you. You may find your seat. But I'm like the apostle now. I feel church up in here tonight. Oh, glory. I feel church in the house tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Bless his name. All right, we're going to try to calm down tonight. We're going to try to calm down. Hey, Amen. We're going to calm down tonight and get the protocol. Is that all right? But I tell you what, if, 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 you, if you are a member of Full Gospel Holy Temple, and if your feet ain't about an inch or two off the floor, something wrong with you. <laughs> if you ain't walking over here this week, something wrong with you. Ah! Man, I tell you something. David said, when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Lord, look like we just in a dream. I guess we're going to wake up here in a little bit. Amen. Praise the Lord. We honor God tonight. We give honor to our fine overseers tonight, to Apostle and Evangelist Murray. Amen. To Bishop and Evangelist Keel. To my precious wife, Sister Cannon. To the Apostle. Leon Wallace, and to all the pastors and 
minister that graced this roster tonight and to the wonderful, lovely first ladies. Amen. It's good to be in the Lord's service one more time. Amen. Praise God. You know, Apostle and Sister Mary have done some fantastic things over the years. Amen. But preacher, Sister Mary, y'all are not outdone y'all self this time. Come on, put your hand together for them tonight. Yeah. Man, I remember years ago, the man of God used to say all the time, I have a vision. Amen. And where there is no vision, then the people perish. But the man and woman of God had a vision. And Lord, I'm so glad that I was a small part of his vision. Young man from the city of Birmingham, Alabama, come to Texas to get me an education. Lost in the world of sin and shame. On my way down, going to hell a hundred miles an hour. But somebody from this church told me about Jesus. And I gave my life to the Lord 32 years ago. And my life hadn't been the same since. Man, I've been on a roll for 32 years. Y'all ain't telling me tonight. And I said, I've been on a roll for 32 years. And, and they're like, every round taking me a little bit higher. I'm glad about Jesus tonight, aren't you? Glad about full gospel, holy temple. You know, I don't care what the devil said about us. We got it going on. Can I shake our bush a little bit? I said, I don't care what the devil said about us. We got it going on. You ought to tell somebody, he, you know, he, he got that right. Yeah, we got it going on here. I, I'm going to get on to the message tonight, but I'm just, I'm happy tonight. Amen. Rejoicing, praise God, and the blessings of the Lord, praise God, and Rejoicing, praise God, that God saw fit to make me a small part of this. And, you know, you just, I don't know how you feel. You just feel. Amen. You just feel. You don't know what to laugh, cry, or what. Amen. But I'm so grateful tonight to be a part of this dedication service. Had a great time on yesterday and enjoying the Lord again tonight. So I'm here to preach. That's what I'm here to do. Try to anyway. Amen. So if y'all help me and pray with me, praise God. I. I um, might be very brief tonight. Is that all right? Yeah, I might be very brief tonight if y'all help me and pray with me. Then I might get excited and wind up having one of them midnight messages. <laughs> y'all going to pray with me tonight? All right, let me get on. I just feel good. Y'all overlook me tonight. Just, just say he ain't got no sense. Just overlook me tonight and just pray for me. Amen. The book of First Chronicles. The book of First Chronicles. We're going to that 13th chapter. We want to try to get those first four verses of this 13th chapter of First Chronicles. When you get it, just say amen. If you ain't got it yet, say wait on me. All right, we'll wait a little while. We ain't going to wait long. All right. Come on, wait on me. This train's a morning train. Evening train going to be too late. Got to say amen. And David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, if it seemed good unto you, and that it be of the Lord our God, let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of Israel and with them also to the priests and Levites which are in their cities and suburbs that they may gather themselves unto us. And let us bring again the ark of our God to us. For we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. And all the congregation said that they would do so. For the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. We thank God for his precious word on tonight. I want you to notice what David said. And this is him talking in that third verse. He said, let us bring again the ark of our God to us. Let us bring again the ark 
of our God to us. I simply want to talk from this thought tonight, bringing back the glory. Bringing back the glory. Touch somebody until a neighbor, it's time to bring back the glory. The ark of God represented the presence of the Lord or the glory of the Lord. David had sent to all of his chiefs and all of his heads of state and all of those that were in authority in Israel and he asked them uh, would it be okay if he brought back the ark of God and all of them consented to David's request and they said it'd be a good thing if we brought the ark back David said because we have not had the ark among us, among us and haven't been able to inquire of it all the days of Saul because we know amen pray good in the history of Israel Saul as being king uh, he turned Israel's heart away from God and he turned his heart away from God the people had wanted a king and they had chose Saul to be their king but at the end of Saul's reign he had turned away from God, had begun to turn to familiar spirits. He had become to, had, had begun to call the psychic hotlines and, 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 and inquire of all the, the witches and the warlocks there. And God hate that kind of can on. He disobeyed God, did what God told him specifically not to do. He had begun to offer up sacrifice that only priests were supposed to offer up. Saul just messed up big time. And after he had disobeyed God, God had let him know that he was taking his kingdom and was getting, giving his kingdom to another. And David was the one that the anointing fell upon. At this particular time, Prager, the Philistines had captured the ark of God and taken it to Philistia and put it in the temple with their god, Dagon. Of course, we know that story, praise God, in the temple of Dagon when they got up in the morning, amen, Dagon had fallen on his face. And they put him back up, and the next day they got up, he had fallen down again. And they put the, put the fellow up again, and he fell down one more time. His hands came off, and his head or something came off. That was God just simply saying, you can't have no two gods in one house. And, and since I am the Lord, you know, every knee got to bow, every tongue got to confess, so they're going to have to bow to the will of the true and the living God. Amen. But David, praise God, even after death of Saul, he was trying to round the people up and get them back together. And, and the Bible let us know that David had some mighty men working at his side. So I find if we're going to do anything for God, you got to have some good folks around you. You got to have some people around you that don't mind going to walk and don't mind doing the work for the Lord. And David had some mighty folks, amen, working at his side. The scripture called them, uh, the heading called them in the scripture, David's mighty men. Had a man in there by the name of Joab who wound up being the chief of his army. Amen. The Jebusites had opposed David's return to Zion. Amen. To take the seat, uh, take the throne. And, and, and David said, whoever go out and smite these Jebusites, I'm going to make him one of my chief. And Joel went and smote the Jebusites. There was a man in there by the name of Jeshobiam. Amen. And the Bible said he slew a hundred men with a spear. Now, if you think that ain't something, he slew a hundred men with a, 300 men with a spear. Uh, he had to do a whole lot of spear. And it, you know, a spear is just something you got to put in your hand and, 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 and stick with it. And this man had to be doing some sticking to kill 300 men with a spear. Some folk can't kill that many men with a gun, with a machine gun. But this man was a mighty man of war. There was another man by the name of Eleazar. The Bible said he was the son of Dodo. And let me tell you, anybody got a daddy named Dodo, you better leave him alone. He got to be a bad fellow. You don't want to mess with a man who daddy named Dodo. <laughs> this man fought and defeated the Philistine, the Bible said, in a barley field. In the length and the space of a barley field, he defeated, amen, the host of the Philistine. There's another man by the name of Benaiah. The Bible said he slew two lion-like men of the tribe of Moab. These men were lion-like. Now, I don't know exactly what all, I don't know what they looked like a lion or or had the nature of a lamb, but they were fierce men. Amen. But Benaiah slew these men in the field of Moab, in Moab, 
and then he went on down and killed a real lion. The Bible says this lion was in a pit with snow in it, and he went and killed that lion. He also killed an Egyptian that had great stature, took his spear out of his hand and beat him down and killed him with his own spear. These were the kind of men that David surrounded himself with because David knew to do what God called him to do. He had to have some folks and it didn't mind going to war. Oh, your father now. So David knew that he had a mighty army. Knew he had some mighty people on his side. But he realized that wasn't quite enough just to have man on his side. David knew to be successful as king of Israel, he needed God's presence. He needed the glory of God to work on his side. The Bible let us know that without the Lord, we can't do nothing. But it also lets us know with him, with him we can do all things. And so David said, let's bring the ark back into the city. Let's go back. How about bringing the presence of God, the ark of God, back into the city? Amen. Because he saw a need for the return of God's presence among them. Because when God dwelt among Israel, amen, they were unstoppable and they were unbeatable. Nothing could stand in their way as long as God was in their midst. Their enemies bowed to their will when God was in their midst. Even sometimes, pray God, they could even change the course of nature when God dwelt in the midst of his people. When God come in the midst, miracles can take place. When God is in the building, I'm telling you, uh, when God come in a place, the lame can leap for joy. When God come in a place, blinded eyes can come open. Deaf ears can be unstopped. Crazy folk can get their sense back when God come in a place. David said, we got to have the presence among us. And all of us to be successful, amen, in our mission for me to be a successful king. And so they went out, pray God, to do this, amen, pray God, to bring the ark back. And as they begin, praise God, to, to do this, pray God, to bring the ark back, pray God, because, you know, the ark had been down in Felicia, and, 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 and it was a curse unto them. Amen. They had been smitten, pray God, with all kinds of sickness and disease there in Felicia. And pray God, they, they sent that ark out the place. They, they, they put that ark and sent the ark out the place. Said, pray God, we're going to want this thing in our midst. See, 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 see the devil, uh, when, whenever God comes into the midst of the devil, he makes the devil uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, he does. The devil can't sit still and sit uh, comfortable in the presence of God. And so they sent the ark out, and David was preparing to bring the ark back to the city. But see, David made some mistakes in trying to return the presence of God back to Israel. See, God had a special way designed how to deal with his ark or how to deal with his presence. You see, I found out, pray God, that God's a God of reverence, and you got to do things in a reverent way if you're going to pray God, deal with God. Most of all, you got to do things God's way if you're going to deal with God and have God to back you up. And so David made some errors in trying to bring the presence back to Israel. First of all, the scriptures say he made a new cart and put the ark on a cart. But that wasn't according, pray God, to the, uh, uh, the rules and regulations, the guideline that God had given Moses back in his day. And they was trying to bring that thing back and, and had some oxen put in the cart and it got to a certain point in the road, amen, and they hit a rock or something or a hole and the, and the cart began to shake. And oh, Uzzah, he was there driving, amen, the ark, uh, driving the cart, praise God. And when he saw the ark begin to slide, he reached back to try to steady the ark and keep it from falling off the cart. And when he touched the, touched the ark of God, the Bible said he, made, he, he fell dead. And that scared David so, they were so scared he was mad at the same time and, and confused. So now why would God slay this man and all he was trying to do was steady the ark. But see, I found out you got to handle the presence of God right. I'm going to get on down in a while. You got to handle the presence of God right. You can't handle God's presence in a kind of way. You got to take care of God's business right. You know, folk die. And, the, and the God's presence can be delayed when you don't handle the presence right. And I find when a time now when a lot of folk is dying, in the spiritual world, they dying because they ain't handling the presence of God right. You know, folk not take the presence of God, the power of God, church and all that, as a plaything in this day and time. If you let me put it this way, the church world not on gone Hollywood. 
Y'all ain't hear me now. I said the church world now done gone. Hollywood is all now about a show. Yeah. But I find out, Prager, you can show only so long. But it come a time, Prager, when you got to be real. Let me tell you, hey, Prager, the devil don't care about your show, but now when, when, when the devil get down to business and when the enemy come against us, we got to have more than a show. We got to have the real thing. We got to have the power and the presence of God in our midst. Look like now ministers, amen, they're vying, amen, Prager, for the Oscars and vying for the Emmy to see who can be the best actor. Who can put on the best show? But I'm telling you today, we're in a time now, but we ain't got no time for show now. We need the power of God in our midst. In this day and time, when you don't handle the power right, folk die. Amen. Folk is killed. A lot of folk is dying spiritually because folk now ain't handling the power of God like it ought to be handled. They won't let him have his way. We have got to the point in the church where we have programmed God out of our services. Y'all, we, we done took him out of our services and, and we done took over as man and now we trying to run God's business. But can't nobody run God's business like God can. Amen. God know how to take care of his own business. And what we got to do as men and women of God is to follow the leading of God as God lead us and let God have his way. Can I get a witness here tonight? It's time to bring the presence back. Amen, Prager. They were trying to do it the wrong way, and, and a man lost his life. David got confused. And so David said, I tell you what, I'm scared of this thing. He said, now, take it on down to Obed Edom's house. I'm scared to bring this thing back to Israel because a man done died here. And Prager, he took the ark down to Obed Edom's house, and, and the Bible said for a, a, a certain amount of months, amen, God blessed that man's house. I mean, the Edward Eden was flourishing, man. The, the man livestock increased. His fields brought forth more than they ever brought forth. Amen. Over Edom, amen, had a brand new wardrobe in the closet. Amen. Had him two brand new cars. Amen. Table was full of good eating food and all that stuff. Amen. The presence of God was blessing old Obed Edom. And when David found out what was going on, that he said, now I got to find a way to get that to Israel because we need that same kind of thing. Amen. Going on in Israel. Can I get a witness here? I want to say tonight, pray God, that folk can only pretend so long. Ha, I come to tell us tonight, pray God, this time, amen, for us to let the real thing, ha, amen, have his way. And that's what I love about full gospel, holy temple. Ha, we believe in the real thing. Can I get a witness here? Ain't no showbiz, pray God, over here. We believe in the real power of God. This is a place of deliverance. Can I get a witness here? And David went and did some research. Now, let me find out what I did wrong. I did something wrong. Let me find out what I did. He began to research and go back and check the law and, and go back to the Pentateuch and begin to research, amen, the books of Moses. And Moses had written and the law that God had given to Moses. And he finally found that section he was looking for as to how to deal with the ark. First of all, man, don't suppose they're touching nobody but the priests. Those that were ordained by God, amen, they were the only somebody supposed to touch the heart. That's why us, I died because he wasn't a priest and he was trying to deal with God's power. And even though they carried the ark, had to carry it with a pole. Had some rings on the side of the box that they put some poles through there. And that's how men carried the ark of God. And when David found out, he said everything and all of us and I look at here we got to have this bigger ark back in the city so let's go out and carry this thing in here like it ought to be carried in can I get a witness here and we find tonight in the church where folk trying to carry the presence of God in the wrong way and the wrong folks is touching amen the heart that's why folk is dying and losing their life but when we get back to order the way that God put it in order then we're going to see another great move and a great wave of God begin to flow. Amen. Through this land. Can I get a witness here tonight? Folk now trying to bring the presence in with noise makers. Can I mellow just a little bit before I get through preaching? Trying to make God move through party whistles. 
noise makers and all that kind of thing, trying to get the spirit to move. But I tell him at home, when the Holy Ghost come in a place, he make his own noise. I heard the joyful sound. Can't nobody make a noise like the Holy Ghost can. Can I get a witness here? You don't need no whistles. Take them whistles and put them on the football field. That's where they need to be. What we got to do is get the presence coming through, and he'll make his own noise. If you don't believe me, go back to the day of Pentecost, when he first made his arrival, when they was up in the upper room waiting on the promise to come from on high. The Bible said they heard a sound like a rushing mighty wind. That was the power and the presence of God coming coming down to Jerusalem. Can I get a witness here? It's time to get with all that artificial stuff and let's bring the presence in like it ought to be brought in. Let's get rid of the whistles and send up some praise and the power come in. Can I get a witness here tonight? Yeah. They were trying to bring it in the wrong way, but they finally got it right. And they put the pole and they started toward the city. In the meantime, David prepared a house for himself and made a tent to pitch, pitch the tent for the ark to dwell in. Amen. Getting ready for the presence to come in. Thank God for people of vision. I know it don't look like, you know, with the empty seats now, but it ain't going to be like this very long. <laughs> Oh, uh, we just pitching a tent. <laughs> oh, Lord, when the brothers get to move in here like it's going to move, <laughs> they ain't going to be empty very long. <laughs> Can I get a witness here? <laughs> but I find out God's a God <laughs> of preparation. <laughs> he always gives you what you need before you're going to need it. <laughs> and this ain't nothing but a sign <laughs> that we're going to need, y'all. <laughs> I can't help myself tonight. Hallelujah. The soul going to be coming in in floods. I believe that tonight because the building that been built, the tent that been pitched, and we as God folk, we going to bring the presence. I said, we're going to bring the presence uh, in this place. Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, we're going to pull on God's heartstrings uh, until we move uh, the very God on the throne uh, of heaven. Uh, we're going to get ourselves ready. Uh, we're going to do whatever it takes uh, to get our God to move. Uh, do I have any witnesses in this house tonight? Pitch the tent for the ark. Say, I'm getting ready for the power to come in here. It ain't made the town yet, but David said, I know it's coming because I done got everything straightened out. I done confessed my faults. I saw where I went wrong, and now I got it all straightened out. So I know he's on his way. Can I get a witness? Tell somebody, tell them, neighbor, God is on the way. We I can't see him right now, but way down in the inner sanctum of our sanctified soul, we can feel there's another great move of God that's coming through. And full gospel, God has set us in place to help bring back this presence and bring back this power. Can I get a witness here tonight? Yeah. We're going to do it right this time. We're going to let the Levites, the priests, carry the ark with the pole. We're going to let the preachers that's called to preach, preach the word. We're going to keep the singers in the choir stand and let the preachers Preach the word. Y'all ain't hear me. We're going to keep the politicians in the state house and let the preachers Preach the word. We're going to keep the president in the White House and let the preachers preach the word. Y'all ain't hear me. How shall they hear without a preacher? Y'all ain't hear me. We got to get back the way God put this thing in order. He called the preacher to preach, the singer to sing, musician to play, and everybody else to do their part. And when we get it in divine order, then God said, I'm going to move. 
like you never seen me move before. Can I get a witness here? So it's time for all of us warriors to fall in line and fit in our space because God is sounding the reveille. He's sounding the wake up call. And so all my folk that's on my side, time to get up and stand shoulder to shoulder because I got a move coming through the land. Can I get a witness here tonight? Oh, and they start carrying that ark toward the city. Now, we think that the ark coming to the city was a beautiful, pretty ceremony. But according to the scriptures and according to Jewish law and history, every so often, so far they took the ark, they stopped and they slew an ox and offered up a sacrifice. They put the ark back on his shoulder and walked a few more miles and they stopped, slew another ox, built an altar, made a sacrifice and kept on going on. What you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to tell you to bring it back like it's supposed to be. It's going to take some sacrificing. Uh oh, y'all ain't hear me now. It's going to take some spiritual sacrificing. Time out now for that name and claim it jump. It's time now to fall on the knees. It's praying time again, y'all. Y'all, it's, it's time to rewarm them prayer closes. Time to go in there and knock the cobwebs out. Take all the shoes and the clothes that took up the prayer space. Put them to the side and get us some praying room. And call on our God until our God answer us. It's time to turn off our love, Lucy. As the world turns, and all my children, and General Hospital, and get back in the prayer room. Y'all ain't hear me. It's going to take some sacrificing. Somebody that don't mind getting down to business and sacrificing to bring this presence where it ought to be. Can I get a witness? And I'm not just talking about a revival in the temple in the house. I'm talking about a citywide, a statewide. A worldwide revival where folk walking down the street and just come under conviction and fall outside the road and say, Lord, save me. Can I get a witness here tonight? They tell me years ago, I don't know how true I was never. they tell me years ago in a great move of God out in California, huh, the saints got to praying, huh, got to seeking God and fasting huh, and calling on God, huh, and God sent a revival huh, to that part of town where folk huh, were sitting around the dinner table huh, getting ready to have supper huh, and were getting ready to say grace huh, over their food, huh, and revival broke out huh, in the household, huh, and instead of eating, huh, that they're eating supper. They wind up throwing up their hands and giving their life to God. I mean, families came in at one time. Oh, y'all hear me now? Folk were down the juke joint, getting ready to turn up their blood light, and all of a sudden they lost their desire to drink and found themselves falling on the knee in the bar, giving their life to God. That's what I'm talking about. When the presence of God comes in a place, He can turn hearts around. He can turn life around, but it's going to take some sacrifices from God's folk to bring the brothers back. Can I get a witness here tonight? They carried the problem. Stop slewing ox. Can't you see them? They were sweaty and they were bloody but they were bringing the glory back, y'all. I said they were sweating and they were bloody, but Lord, they were bringing back the glory of God. And I know some of you tonight, spiritually, you're sweating because you're going through some hot stuff and you're bloody because you've been wounded. But I come to tell you, keep on sweating and keep on bleeding because all you doing is getting ready to bring back the power of a true animal. Y'all, they talk. See before God can come.
come in the midst of his folk, he got to get us ready for his presence and for his power. And every time God move us around higher, he got to get us ready for that new level. Can I get a witness here? That's what God is doing to you and me tonight. He's preparing us. He's sweating us. He's getting us a little bloody so the power can come into place. Can I get a witness? He gets some folk ready to lay hand on the sick and watch the sick get healed. Can I get a witness? And you're going to be able to do it without no hesitation because that sickness that was in your body, God touched and healed you. And you know without a shadow of a doubt, if God did it for me, he can do it for you. Can you say that? God now is making some true bone witnesses. I said God is making now some true bone witnesses. Not no hearsay people. That somebody told me that he could and, they, and somebody told them that he, God not making some true bone witnesses. <laughs> See a witness is one that done been there, <laughs> done that, that done been through that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got to tell you because <laughs> you've experienced it <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> Can I get a witness here? <laughs> and some of you tonight, <laughs> you down in the valley <laughs> of the shadow of death. <laughs> but that's all right. Stay there because <laughs> the only thing God trying to do <laughs> is give you a testimony <laughs> and make you a witness. <laughs> so when you get ready to deal with somebody that's down in the valley and the shadow of death, you can tell them, I done been there, but I know if you hold on and wait on your God, he'll visit you in the valley and he'll bring you out. Can I get a witness in the night? Bring him back. The presence. God is doing something on the inside of his folk. He's making us, you let me put it this way, I can't explain it and put them words, but if you let me put it this way, he's making us Holy Ghost mean. Turn us into lean, clean, mean, devil killing machines. Come on, talk to me now. Look at somebody and tell don't let this him fool you. Tell him I'm a killer, I'm a devil killer. That's what God turn us, y'all. <laughs> Y'all don't, don't let my outward appearance fool you. There's something on the inside. God put something on the inside. He making me a devil killing, a devil driving machine. Through all the things we're going through, the blood, the sweat of my God. Don't forget the tears. God is raising up an army. Can I get a witness that's going to bring back the power and the glory of God? I don't know about you tonight, but I'm just about to like Elijah in the day of Ahab when they had taken the country into our daughters and into apostasy and when all those false prophets had came through there tried to call on their God and their God would not answer I'm about like Elijah it's time to get out the way all your folks to get out the way all that weak stuff get out the way let some folk come through that know what's going on let some folk come through that's bringing the presence let somebody come through that's bringing the glory let somebody come through who God will answer Fire! Can you say that? Let somebody work who know how to work. Ain't scared to work. Don't mind working. Let us stand toe to toe with the devil <laughs> and box with him like Ali and Frazier. <laughs> Can I get a witness here? <laughs> oh yeah, time to get in the ring with him now. <laughs> God is putting us in the ring <laughs> with this devil. <laughs> Can I get a witness? But I got confidence tonight <laughs> that we're going to knock that fella out <laughs> because God <laughs> is in the midst. <laughs> tell somebody, tell him, neighbor, God <laughs> is in the midst. <laughs> and tell him I know he's here because <laughs> I'm here bringing him. <laughs> How many gonna help bring him in? Uh uh. I said, How many gonna help bring him? If God don't come to church in nobody, He ought to come in you. Talk to me, somebody. 
if don't nobody else bring the Lord to church, you ought to make sure you bring him. When you get out of your car, you ought to check yourself and make sure God is there. Can I get a witness now? Leave all our troubles, all our problems, talking to Christians now. Leave all our troubles and problems at the front door and bring God in here. Can I get a witness? So those that don't know God can be delivered and can be set free. Can I get a witness? I said God is bringing his presence back through his folks, through their sacrifices, and through their trials and their tribulation. But my prayer to prayer tonight is God, have your way. Can I get a witness here? Bless me and use me any kind of way you want to use me. But we need your presence. And we need your power. We need your glory to come in the house. Can I get a witness here? When they got down to the city, Jerusalem, brought the ark into the city, David looked out and saw it coming. He said, my God, it's what I've been waiting on. It's what I've been looking for. This is what we've been needing. This is what we've been missing for a long time. Hallelujah. This world of ours need God. And we've been needing him for a long time. We need a revival in our world. I mean, all over. I think Apostle mentioned yesterday, Sister Mary, one of them about kidnapping all these young girls. Nothing about the devil. What a grown man. Oh, yeah. But that's going on now. Folk now is confused in this day and time. Folk don't know who they are no more. Men don't know that they men. Women don't know that they women. Some of them say they both of them. You talking about confusion. If you don't know you're a dog or cat, something wrong with you. But we're in that time now, y'all. I'm serious. But well, folk now, we need a move. We need a real move of God. And all this shake, rattle, and roll ain't going to cut the mustard. <clears throat> I'm sorry to tell you that, but ain't no this shake, rattle, and roll. Sound good, but ain't no results. We don't want to excite folks. We want to get folk delivered and set free. God don't want a man to just say, I need help, and then leave him there. God wants that man helped. He don't want to be a referral service to refer folks to other things. Something wrong with my mind. But I know the psychologist down here, you know, I go to him myself every two weeks. God needs a church that can regulate that man's mind. God's presence can regulate a person's mind. Are y'all farming tonight? Bring him back to presence. David said we got the habit in the city. And when he saw it coming back in, he looked out there and said, my God what I've been leading. And then David got so happy. He got the praise in God. Right out there in the streets with the common people because he was so glad to see the presence come in. Let me tell you, when the real presence come through the land, folk going to be praising God. Joy going to come back. Peace of mind going to come back. And only God's presence can bring this tonight. Our programs, thank God, firmly wonderful. But without the power of God, the inadequate. Our governmental programs, thank God for them. Appreciate them doing something to try to help humanity. But without the glory of God, the presence of God is inadequate. We got to have God in this day and time if we're going to survive as a people. Can I get a witness now? And somebody got to be responsible of bringing it back and bringing it in. That's what my hat's off to our overseers tonight. Thank God for people <laughs> with vision. People of determination. People of consistency. That say, although the church world is changing, I believe I stay with the word. And we can see what God can do when you stay with the word. Can I get a witness here tonight? I don't know all what God got in store for us, but I know great things is coming our way. 
We ain't the only thing professing to be right and to be of, of God. God got folk everywhere. But what I'm saying to us tonight, we part of the number. And it's time for us to step up and take our place. One fellow said a long time ago, I forget exactly who it was, he said, uh, he talking about some folks talking about bragging, you know. He said, but if you can do a thing, it ain't bragging. <laughs> if you can do it, it ain't bragging. You just can do it. And if we got it, y'all, we just got it. Come on, talk to me now. If God raised us up, he just to raise us up. We can't do nothing about that. But stand in the place that God done put us and bring us in. This last wave of glory that God's going to bring through this land before Jesus come. Tell somebody, neighbor, help me. Bring this glory back. Listen, if you're not saved, you can be delivered tonight. No doubt about it. God can set you free tonight and make you a part of his kingdom. It's all about the ask because his presence is in this place tonight. Come on, stand to your feet. I'm going to stop right there. Bless his name. Lift those hands and give God the glory. This is the day of the church, the real church. We're leaving out of here with glory, power, authority, and the anointing. God is getting us ready, even as I speak tonight. It's not a good time. This is not a good time to be a sinner. Definitely not a good time. Because time is short. It's running out. This is a time to be saved. If you're ever going to be saved, ever got plans to be saved the time to do it is right now because there's a move coming in there's a move coming through tonight a move of salvation and a move of damnation just depends on what side you're on but while our heads are bowed our eyes are closed our hearts and minds on the master I'm going to extend an altar call tonight a prayer call for you that want to be saved you that want God in your life, I want you to start coming right now, wherever you're standing, and you know you need God, come tonight. Bring your life to the Lord, and let God save you. Let God deliver you. Let God set you free, and make you a part of this great move of God that we're going to have. Are there any tonight? Come quickly. Come now. Don't hesitate. Don't be ashamed. Don't be bashful. Come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The door of salvation is still open. Whosoever will, the scripture said, let him come. Let him come. Are there any tonight? Anyone in the house tonight? Hallelujah. Are there any sick in your body? Need God to touch and hear you come quickly? Any petition you have, bring it to the Lord tonight. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Bless his name. Bring it to the Lord tonight. Bring it to the Lord. In the knees, in the knees. Thank you, Jesus. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. This is a day of deliverance. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Shall be set free. All right, keep coming tonight while we pray.